Okay, so chapter six, matrices. And this is really like a brand new area of maths. Um, so I think it's important for me to point out a few things. Um, these are the kind of stuff we're gonna be looking at, but they're not gonna make a lot of sense until we've really understood what matrices are. So what I wanted to say is before studying this chapter, I really, really highly recommend watching chapters one to eight of three blue, one brown's essence of linear algebra series. These videos um, that Grant Sanderson has made on his YouTube channel, three blue, one brown, are just absolutely amazing. And they will put everything that we're learning about here into context and they're going to make the next chapter seven uh, which is linear transformations they're just going to make it so much easier and everything is going to make sense i wouldn't necessarily recommend taking notes or that you need to understand absolutely everything in those videos um, they're just there to kind of give you a sense about what a matrix actually is um, and what some of the ideas are that go behind it because when i started studying this um, when i was like 17 18 it just all felt like a lot of rules about matrices and didn't really understand why what they did or why they were useful. So if you start off by watching just the first few chapters of the Essence of Linear Algebra playlist from 3Blue1Brown, you're just going to put yourself in such a good position. Um, Grant Sanderson's channel is literally just one of the best math channels that's out there. So I'm sure you've probably seen it already, but if you haven't, definitely go and check it out because it's going to be very, very useful for lots of different things, not just linear algebra, loads of stuff on calculus and other things too. So let's get started with some of the basics about matrices. So a matrix, which is the single floor, uh, the single form, and matrices is the plural, a bit like um, index and indices. What it literally means, it is an array of numbers. An array of numbers is kind of like numbers inside a grid. An array is literally like a table of things, really. So this is an example of a matrix that we've got here. And on a very simple level, a matrix is just a way to organize different values into rows and columns. And what you're doing is you're representing all of these values as one single structure that you could perform operations to. Um, really what becomes very useful about matrices is that they can represent things called linear transformations or linear functions, which we see a lot of in chapter seven. Um, and you can represent these linear transformations using matrices. So you can represent things like rotations, reflections and enlargements. Um, and you can also use matrices to solve linear simultaneous equations. They become like a really powerful tool. Um, and if you start off by watching the three blue, one brown playlist on essence of linear algebra, you'll really understand what a matrix actually is and what it can do before learning all of these rules that we've got here. So just one application of what they can do, because um, matrices can do lots of things to do with linear transformations, rotating things and enlarging things. They're really, really useful in 3D graphics um, where they can do these rotations and enlargements um, and they can sort of take 3D objects and, and transform them into 2D objects so that you can watch them on screen, whether it's like a computer animation um, or maybe going to like the cinema and seeing an animated film. So it's got loads and loads of real life applications and you'll probably be studying matrices whether you're doing a, um, a maths related degree it's going to have a lot of matrices in as well it's just a very powerful thing particularly stuff in computer science as well okay so here are the fundamentals of matrices so number one dimensions of matrices so they have this thing that's called a dimension and the dimension of the matrix is matrix is actually its size and the way that we define this is its number of rows and then the number of columns that it has in that particular order now the reason i know that it goes rows then columns first is rows go in this direction and columns go in this direction. So this reminds me of like the X direction and this reminds me of the Y direction. And obviously that's the way that coordinates and the alphabet goes. So this one that we've got here has got one, two rows. So it's gonna be a two. And the number of columns it's got is one, two, three. So this is a two by three matrix. So we'd call it a two by three matrix. And this cross here doesn't mean they're being multiplied. It's just saying it's like a two by three matrix. So the next one we can see we've got one, two, three rows and we've only got one column. So it's a three by one. And this one has just got one row and it's got three columns. So it's a one by three matrix. So it goes rows, then columns. So second thing we're going to talk about is some of the notation or the names for matrices. So you'll see that a matrix can have either square or curvy brackets, but the textbook only uses curvy brackets like this one. But you can actually represent them with kind of square brackets. And a couple of the questions I do later on will have that. So this is an example of a matrix. 
This is also a matrix, but in particular, it's actually a column vector because we've used column vectors before. This is also a matrix, but it has a special name of being called a row vector because it is just a vector that's going along in one row. So a matrix with one column is simply a vector in the usual sense. So we could call this a matrix. We could call it a column vector. They're kind of interchangeable and you'll be able to sort of like um, use um, some of the ideas with vectors with matrices as well. So number three, the variables that we use for matrices. If the value of a variable is a matrix, we use bold capital letters. Um, you don't have to underline these like we do with vectors. Um, you can actually just write them as capital letters. Um, I know with vectors, when you see them typed, you might see bold, but if it was um, something you're handwriting, you would underline. For this though, if you're gonna write down a matrix, you can just use a capital letter for a matrix that we've got here. So for example, this is the matrix A, We've got the matrix C is equal to the inverse matrix P multiplied by T multiplied by P. Um, but we'll obviously we'll explore some of these things about this um, minus one and stuff like that later on. Um, adding and subtracting matrices. Luckily, adding and subtracting matrices is really, really easy. You simply just add and subtract the corresponding elements of each matrix. So because they have to have corresponding elements, and by corresponding, I mean like the one would get added to the six, the three would get added to the minus two. This means that they must have the same dimension. It wouldn't make sense if you had a matrix that say, only was a two by two because these ma these um, elements inside the matrix wouldn't have anything to add to the next part. So they only make sense with adding if they are the same dimension. So let's really quickly just work this out. You'd have the one and the six, which is the seven, the three and the minus two, which is the one, the minus seven and the nine, which is two, the four and the two, which is six, the zero and the one, which is one, and the five and the zero, which is five. I hope I haven't made any mistakes there. And obviously you can do this with subtraction and you can also do it with unknowns in. So this one would just be a three minus Q for the first bit, a zero minus minus three, well, that's just gonna be a plus three, minus one, minus one, that's minus two, two minus one is one, zero minus minus four is four, and three minus one is two. So you'll notice I tried to keep like a bit of a gap in here to show that there was a difference between these parts and these parts, because the three minus Q is a slightly bigger element. So you wanna make sure that you've got a gap in between so that it's clear that it's still a matrix. So those are the first four of the matrix fundamentals. Let's have a look at some things to do with scalar multiplication now. So a scalar that we've got here, a scalar is a number which can scale the elements inside a matrix. And actually, you encountered this at GCSE in the context of vectors, where we would say like 3a, that's just the vector a, and it's been scaled or multiplied by the scalar 3. So luckily, this just does exactly what you'd expect it to. Everything inside this matrix is just going to get multiplied by 3. So we're just going to get 3, 9, minus 21, 12, 0, and 15. You may see things written like this, where it may tell you what A is equal to as a vector, as a matrix, and then they might ask you to work out what is 2A. So you're just going to take everything inside that matrix and you're going to double it. So we're going to have 2Q and minus 6, 2, 2, minus 8, and 2 here. Now in this question, what we actually want to do is we want to find out the value of K. So we've got now a combination of some addition and subtraction and also some scaling that we've got here. So this kind of works um, just like vectors, to be honest, if you've, if you've looked at stuff with vectors. So I'm going to multiply everything by K in this section. So I'm going to have minus 3K plus 2K squared, 2K squared is equal to K6. So you can either combine these together or we can just have a look at the elements on the left hand side and the right hand side. So this element plus this element must be equal to this element. In other words, minus 3 plus 2k squared must be equal to k. So this looks like a quadratic, so it's going to be 2k squared minus k minus 3 is equal to 0. So I think you could either just put this in your calculator. I think this is going to be a 2k minus 3 and a k plus 1. Does that make sense? Yeah, we've got the minus 3k and the plus 2k. So that's going to be equal to 0. So either k is equal to 3 over 2 or k is equal to minus 1. But so far, we've only checked the top elements. We also need to check the bottom elements to see what value of k will make both of them true. So down here, I'm going to have k plus 2k squared must be equal to 6. So we've got another quadratic here, so it's going to be 2k squared plus k minus 6 equals 0. And I think this is going to factorise to a 2k minus 3 
and a k plus 2. Let's just double check that. So we've got minus 3k and a plus 4k. Minus 3 plus 4 is the k, and we've got the minus 6 there. So that tells me that either k is equal to 3 over 2, or k is equal to minus 2. Now it has to be true for both of them. So the only one that's going to work for both of them is k is 3 over 2. So it can't be this solution here. So the thing that makes this one true is when k is equal to 3 over 2. So that's just some pretty much straightforward stuff you'd expect with scalar multiplication. Just before you go and try the first exercise, I just wanted to point out a few names for some special matrices. First of all, a matrix is square if it has the same number of rows as columns. So this is a two by two square matrix, and this is a three by three square matrix. A zero matrix, kind of what you're going to expect it to be, is one where all of the elements are zero and the dimensions are usually clear from the context. So if you wrote zero as a matrix like this, it's just gonna be a matrix that is filled with zeros. And let's say the question is all three by three, you would know it to be a three by three. Now we're gonna talk a lot more about the identity matrix later on, which is the, the capital letter I. It is a square matrix, which has ones in the leading diagonal. And when we say the leading diagonal, we mean from the starting element and then kind of flowing downwards like that. Um, and it's zeros elsewhere. Again, the dimensions will depend on the context. So if you were doing a question that was all about three by threes, the identity matrix would look like this. If you were doing a question that was about two by twos, the identity matrix would look like this. We will see the significance of the identity matrix when we cover matrix multiplication um, imminently very soon. Um, but you might already have a bit of a guess about what the identity matrix can be if you know um, what an identity might be. OK, so that's everything you need to know for exercise 6A. Go and have a, um, a go at that after you have caught up on the three blue, one brown essence of linear algebra playlist.